All right, everyone. Now that we have covered the basics, which is the initial setup plus the interactions, it's time to talk about some of the formatting options. And the first thing that we are going to be covering is going to be the legends. So as always, in the sample report, you do already have some pre-configured variations of the charts available in the combo view and the combo bar view. As for us, we're going to now go to the training view because we're going to be building everything from scratch. So first things first, we're going to add an instance of the combo visual. There we go. Let's just resize it a bit more. And the same as always, we're going to also disable the background so that it fits into the background a little bit nicer. Now, as far as the visual configuration itself, we're going to be using two levels of the hierarchy and two different series. Within the categories, we're going to be using department plus the region. So there we go. And for the series, we're going to be using two of them, like I said, and we're going to be using payout. And the second one is going to be a budget. So there we go. Adding these two allows me to create a new instance of the combo chart. Now, if we go into the formatting option, something to note is that by default, the legends block or the formatting tab for it is actually going to be disabled. So it's something that you have to manually re-enable in order for it to work. So right here, enable legends. There we go. We have these legends right here. And if we open up the tab for the legends, you can see that we have actually quite a few of these formatting options to customize it even further. So first things first, of course, you have to change the position if it's necessary. So what we offer to you are going to be top, bottom, left, and right options. Afterwards, you have some additional customization for the block of legends itself, so you can customize the height and the width. Afterwards, you have a little bit more customization regarding the markers, so you can define the size and the shape for them. And afterwards, you have a few options for the font stylings, things like font size, family, styles, and so forth. Now. Something that we do a little bit differently with the legends is we actually create a sort of a screenshot or a snapshot of a series to make it more visible for the end user. What I mean by that is, for example, if we go down to the series customization and I'm going to open up series one, which is going to be the payout, and I'm going to transition the column into a line. So there we go. One other thing we're going to do quickly here is we're going to bring that series in front so we can see it visibly. And now, if you look at the legends, two things happen. First is we rearrange these elements because the display order allows me to choose which one is in front, which was in the back. And the second thing is you now see that previously we had a sort of a square here for the payout. And now we have an actual line. So in case, for example, we go back to the series customization and let's say add a marker to it. So for example, right here, we're going to add a circle. You can see that that circle is being added on the legend. So like I said, it essentially creates a snapshot of the series, which allows you to better visualize it for the end user so they can find it more easily. So this is one variation how you can work with it. The other variation is if you actually go a little bit down into the series configuration, you can see that by default, makes sense it's staying on default. You can first one of the default formatting options or default shapes for it, things like circles, squares, ROMs, and so forth, or you can keep it there. And if you want to change the series for all of them to be exactly the same, we can go back to the legends block, which is right here, and marker shape instead of default, let's say we're going to choose a triangle. And you can see that this forces all series to display one particular marker shape for all of the series. Now, once we cover the legends and you do start to understand, OK, so what are the flexibilities for it? The next thing we're going to cover is going to be data sorting. Now, for the visual itself, by default, what happens is it's going to be sorted in a descending order based on the value on the primary series. So whichever series you add at first, sort of like the dominator, which defines how the visual is going to be sorted. Now, if we go into the formatting options right here under data section, you can see we have data sorting. So default is what I just explained to you. Then, of course, you can also force the visual to sort itself in a descending or ascending order. Now, default option is also interesting because what it allows you to do is it allows you to use the built-in sorting ellipsis. So right here on the top right corner of the visual, if you click on the ellipsis, at the bottom here, you can see you can sort it ascending or descending. And you can also sort by a different column, which is something that allows you to create custom sort for the visual. This is typically used when you have more textual information, but let's say, for example, like um, seniority, right? I'm going to say five years, six years, seven years. By alphabetical order, it's not going to sort it properly. So I'm going to use a secondary column to sort things by. So this allows me to create that custom sorting. 
So we cover the legends and the sorting options, and these two things alone should already start to make better charts for you for the end users read.